Would you agree with this? That you were the David Beckham of women's football. The at David that time? Beckham. But did she get what David Beckham's got <laughs> yeah. with it? That's a little bit. So the answer's no. <laughs> The game has grown that much now. It's all over the TV. The current players will probably get that recognition, I think, I hope. You were a star of Bend It Like Beckham. Was you in, so you were in the film? Yeah, we're in the background. I'm going to go over and watch that now. The defendant against Kira Knightley was atrocious. Other people are more proud of me than what I am myself. And it weren't until I received my gold cap in the glass box that I finally thought, you know what, I've done all right here. Oh. Secondary fire. This is actually this is actually happening. This is the middle of um, the of the podcast. You go and do what you need to do. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs>Welcome back to The Scouse Code with Bianca Cook and Paul Garrity. In this episode, we've left Merseyside and made our way to Staffordshire to meet an Everton legend. Rachel Unit may not be from Liverpool, but she's certainly earned her title as an adopted Scouser. She played for Everton for eight years over two spells, winning the FA Cup and League Cup. But added to that, she's an England centurion with 102 caps. Now a firefighter, Unit speaks to us about her footballing journey and how her time on Merseyside shaped her life. So let's get straight into this episode and meet former England defender, Rachel Unit. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank um, you. We're here, well, we, tell us where we are at the moment. Where are we? Because we, we go to various different locations. So tell us, I think people can work out we're in a fire station. But yeah, where this are is we? the coolest one we've yeah, been to. Yeah, it is so far. So far. Yeah. And, the cold, and the coldest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the coldest yeah. uh, we are at Handley Fire Station, Staffordshire. Um, my place of work. All oh, right, okay. Yes. So we'll get into the reason why that's your place of work uh, as, the, as the show goes on. Um, but the reason why you're on this show is because... You're not because you're a Scouser, but because you are an Everton legend. So you are an adopted Scouser. For adopted want of a better Scouser. Word. Would you adopted agree with that? Scousing, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely. She's a legend as well. So. Absolute legend. Now, you played for Everton for eight years over two, over two periods. What does that kind of mean to you? Because eight years is a long period of time. What does that mean to you in terms of your football and career? Do you, do you have great memories from playing for Everton? Yeah, of course. That's where I learnt my trade, uh, under Mo Marley. Um, he was a fantastic manager. And obviously, the likes of Farrah Williams, Jill Scott, um, Jodie Anley, Becky Easton. So back then, we had a great team. Um, I moved to Everton, I think, when I was 16, 17. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I spent a lot of time in Liverpool. Didn't pick up the accent. Oh, no, you haven't Thankfully. got it. <laughs> I'm joking. Not this beautiful yeah. accent. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a massive part of my uh, footballing career and probably where I learned, like I say, where I learned the trade. And from that, become successful, you know, with England. And You're putting yourself down there. She's done a lot, a lot better than that. Yeah, hey, yeah, exactly. Pick you yourself up, girl. A glittering <laughs> career um, to give people a bit of a, a, an, out, a, an outlook of, as to what your career was like. 102 England caps, England Woo. Centurion. Scraped it. Scraped it, yeah, scraped <laughs> it. Just got in there. Yeah, just, just <laughs> Um, and eight goals as well. We'll talk probably a few about a few of those goals as well as, as we go on, because there's one or two memorable ones, isn't there, really, as, as your career went on. You're a Hall of Famer. You're in the English Football Hall of Fame. I don't know whether we're qualified to speak. To, we, she's, a, oh, she's a legend, yeah. Absolute it's legend. On a being here. And I remember after Euro 2005, you were that big a star at that particular time. I remember speaking to a number of people, and they said, I don't, would you agree with this, that you were... The David Beckham of women's football. David that time. Beckham. <laughs> no, but in terms of your popularity, though, because a lot of people knew who you were for that period of time. Um, yeah, but did she get what David Beckham no, got? Yeah, yeah, no, no, didn't get the answers. No, didn't get the dollar. You didn't get the dollar, did you? You yeah. bend it like Beckham, but yeah. you didn't get the the, the dollars That's like Beckham. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you agree with that statement? You know what? It makes I'll, you I'll embarrassed, just, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, but. Why that's can't what, she that's be what people, that's what people tell me. Why can't she yeah. be that? Well, you know. Why can't yeah. he say um, he, uh, is the, he is the, de- he the is girl the... version of <laughs> yeah. Rachel? He, he is the Rachel unit of men's football. Yeah, let's unit. turn it around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turn it around. Sounds better, doesn't it? But um, yeah, that's what people used to say, but I wouldn't say it myself. You wouldn't say it yourself. <laughs> and, now, and now you're a firefighter, so clearly... You, you, are there any similarities between football and firefighting? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Um, obviously... 
the social sides, you get the banter and everything else. Um, and I think skill-wise as well, um, obviously football, there's a lot of skills you need to, to play at the elite level. You know, you need the communication, the commitment, the dedication and the adaptability. And it's pretty similar in, in the fire service, you know, that, so I've transferred those skills across. So it's been quite a smooth transition. Uh, from football to the fire service. They're like the um, life lessons that we don't actually appreciate, do we, when we're in sport? Like that, what you learn and then how well it can trans transfer over in life and other massive opportunities like firefighting. Um, you don't appreciate it when you're younger, when you're just in like a sports environment, do you? Yeah, you, I don't think you realise that you pick those skills up until, like say, Later the next life. step in life. Um, and like say, fire service... You know, it's, it's helped me massive playing football and picking up all those skills to transfer across. Because um, obviously I probably wouldn't have had those skills um, getting into the fire service. So, I know, I know all the banter that went with it. The banter, yeah. I work, with, I work with four or five guys, so you can only imagine, can't you? One of the things, that's, we, you and I spoke the other day about this podcast and, you know, you are probably fitter now than you were when you were playing. Would you agree with that? I mean, it's a different type of fitness, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, if you put me on a football field and asked me to run for 90 minutes, <laughs> I would probably be dying. And I'd probably struggle and I'd probably suffer five days later. Yes. And I, uh, I experienced that a few months ago. We had a five-a-side tournament, a fire service one up in Manchester. And Did it was like... Uh, no, we lost in the oh. semis, I think it was. Yeah, Scotland won in the end. Oh. But for the for the next five days, I was a wreck. Written off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it was like stop-start, isn't it? 12 minutes... That 3G surface, honestly, <laughs> my body was dead. But fitness-wise, yeah, um, I, I train probably as much now. I think I'm a master at burpees now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Card burpees, I do love a burpee. I remember, I remember you messaging me a couple of years ago about burpees, and you said, right, try and do, uh, was it like 10, and then repeat that 10 times or something? Just like pyramids and stuff. Yeah, yeah I've got a new one now. You pack a card, so you go for the whole pack of cards, burpees with two minutes run between, and... So you turn that five cards, like run two minutes. So yeah, it sounds. Is that hard. Something, I do enjoy. You know, when we talk about fitness and that sort of thing, what what is your regime? Anything like that sort? I ain't of? doing no burpees. Let's do it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously we've got to uh, make sure we add the conditioning. In Taekwondo itself, I do every morning is like conditioning. Um, the more sparring, the more like conditioning rounds on the pads, you get conditioning in that. Um, but we do actually do like conditioning twice a week every time. We do like running, bike. Um, the odd sake, it depends what phase we're in. Um, but yeah, I ain't doing no card baby yeah. jumps. Uh, <laughs> do you have to, for, for firefighting, like train? Do they make sure you do some training to like in your day-to-day -day work as well? Is that part of um, being a firefighter? Yeah, we get an hour a day to go to the gym. Um, as you can see, you might see at yeah, the top there, there's, there's a gym up there, the which is, it's great because uh, it was quite small, the gym, but the police have, have moved in to um, share the building with us now. So they've extended the gym and there's more equipment so they've got some uh, good stuff in there, but we, uh, we, we get an hour a day to uh, do a bit of cardio, a bit of weights. Is that like compulsory or not really? Um, yeah, it is, but there's some that have a day don't off. bother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you and I have known each other for the best too part. Too long. Of, yeah, too long, yeah. <laughs> best part of 20 years, isn't it, really? Is it? Yeah, it's the best part How of 20 years. How old are you again? Flew by. Yeah, it kind of went by. Yeah. So uh, well, 18 years, I think it is, 2005, when you and I met. So it was just after the Euros. You were kind of at the, at the height. Um, I think we actually met each other digitally first before all of this. Is that MySpace? That, well, no, I was going to say that. Instagram one around back then. MSN. I remember, <laughs> I remember you were one of the first people I remember being on MySpace, actually, which was absolutely bizarre. I'm just going to put out that I didn't have my own. Yeah, yeah, there you you're go. too young for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, us oldies. Um, but it was, remember the, after Euro 2005, it all went mental for you. There was a fan site made, if you remember. Do you remember this fans forum, this Rachel Unit fans forum? Do you remember that? I think I remember that. Because you were in the States at the time, I think, when, when all that kind of kicked off because you went over yeah, to the States after the Euro. Yeah, someone created it. Someone created it. And all these fans kind of. Oh, is that the one that you were on? That was, sorry, what was that? <laughs> the one you're on. I'm, the one, I'm still on it. I'm the only one, I'm the only one that's still on it. Only liking it now. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that, I remember, because I was, I was doing my research into women's football because I just started doing it for the BBC. So this fan site popped up. And I remember message, you were on it actually speaking to the fans okay. and what have you, you know, saying, oh, how has how's this all turned out and all the rest of it. And I remember I messaged you and you were in the States and you went, oh, I said, you know, I might be interviewing you at some point soon. Do you remember anything about that time? 
Mm. Say yeah, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Just say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finish it off. <laughs> I remember the the, um, the fan page. Now you've said that. Now you've brought it up. But chatting. I'm just trying to think. I think vaguely. I do. I'm sure. Do you reckon it's still there? We'll have to um, have a look. See if it's um, unless somebody. It's, it's long still gone. Now. Still so, so have you still got that password? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> somebody will have had to pay for the domain for Use that. Isn't it? So yeah, so somebody will have to pay for that. But no. But at that time though, you you know because you were a big name and and whatnot. Did, was it the only time in your career, really, where it's kind of just gone a bit mental? 2005. No, for me, I don't think it was any different because, like, like you say, there weren't that mu- much media interest uh, in the game back then. Like I say, you was probably one of the first uh, broadcasters or whatever yeah. that were, were involved in women's football. Mm. But like I say, because it was there weren't that much e- uh, media interest back then. It weren't. I don't think it was that mad. Even like, uh, I remember being at Euro 2005. Like, there was quite a bit of publicity then uh, and media interest, but it weren't like, you know, if you look at Telly now, now and look at like the likes of Leah Will Williamson, yeah. she's everywhere. It was, it was nothing like that, which I quite enjoyed. I, I, yeah. I, mean, I like to be in the background. I me. think like for that though, like we've got to remember what would, what you did then, I'm not saying back then, like what you did to start it off, someone started it off and what the girls are getting now and how it's gone a lot more on TV and um, every, like you said, like people know the female team now by name and everything. It's not just like, oh, that girl over there. Um, that started back then as well. It didn't, it doesn't just change overnight. It, it grew and grew and you were part of that first bit, which I think is like impressive and is nice to like, know about that side and because you're like the legends from it that lead this off and it'll only they'll be the start of the next generation when hopefully in like 10 more years or 20 years the girls game even more is bigger than the boys so it all there's all stepping stones yeah. and you were the the first stepping stone of yeah it. we kind of paved the way didn't we um like area we, we weren't successful at start at the start of you know my career when i was 18 um we, we weren't athletes we yeah. weren't fit and it You'd like the Germans and the Americans were like the two top teams back then. Um, and then the FA employed sports scientist Dawn Scott, who basically set us training programs and she turned us into athletes. Actually had to train. Yeah. yeah. And we, that's when we became more successful because technically we had the ability, but we just didn't have the other side, the, the fitness levels. Well, they say that, don't they? Talent and hard work, it has to come together to make it. You've probably all had all the talent, and now you've got the. But like we never actually won anything. We got to the Euro uh, Euro finals, lost to Germany six two, but we was always we can we uh, qualified for every World Cup, yeah. every Euro. So we we did did improve a lot, um, but we we're still a little bit behind the Germans, the French, the Americans. But now it's different Catching ball game. Now. Different yeah. ball game there. Well, we've it? caught up now. <laughs> the thing is, Bianca, you, you made a, a, a very good point in the respect that the women's game has gone through almost phases because there was a, like a, a dark period where there was no interest whatsoever. The women were kind of ostracized and, and the, the game was banned. Then there was a period where if it's like it was really amateur, it was almost behind closed doors for a lot of time. But I think to Euro 2005 was the, the next generation of the game, which then, as you say, paved the way for what we see now. Do you, in, terms of, in terms of legacy, we'll just get into that briefly, just for a second. In terms of legacy, do you, are you still involved in the game in any way? Mm, no, I just watch it and put, gonna, and put a bet on it. Put a bet on it. I was going to say, I was going to ask you that. That's probably the biggest I like that thing. Bit. Yeah, have a little bet. But I do still, to be fair, I do still watch the women's games, uh, club level and international. Um, but other than that, I don't have a lot to do with it. But in terms of like Everton, you were, I would say, Everton legend, played there for eight years. Have you got any involvement in the game now? Nothing at all. Nothing. Not heard from Everton since Mo and Keith left, probably. Um, I know there's a few Tonys back there, isn't she? So yes. there's a, there's a one maybe one player that was around when I was around but yeah. other than that nothing but it, I think what I think that's one of the things that the the, the women's game needs to grab hold of because we speak about say Liverpool men's team we know all about Steven Gerrard we know about Kenny Dalglish because they're spoken about all the time because they're legends of the football club yes. Everton Dixie Dean I mean Dixie Dean was probably the first legend in football whoever knows it and then you've got you know Graham Sharp and Andy Gray and Howard Kendall and all all, all those names I think in the women's game, that's something that's missing because we have had this generation of players like yourself and Kelly Smith and Farrah Williams and et cetera, et cetera, come through, but they're almost forgotten once they've left. Do you think that's something that 
the game needs to improve upon to understand the past so you can embrace the future? Uh, yeah, I think so. And I think that will come. Yeah. Um, like I say, it didn't happen in my generation, but I think it'll, be, it'll happen in the next you know, the next 10 years, because obviously the game has grown that much now and it's it's all over the TV. So people actually know the players, whereas back then we weren't really, unless you followed, unless you had family, friends involved in women's football. And they put it on TV. It had to be on TV because like social media is different now as well. Yeah, yeah. And like I say, you didn't have social media back then. So I think like the next generation, like say 10 years time or whatever, then I think the current players will probably get that recognition i think i hope, hope so I yeah hope so. yeah well it's certainly that if the, if the game progresses like we all want it to i yeah. think it needs it does need to embrace form i do think it's like a negative like it is obviously unfortunate that you didn't get the 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 limelight should we say mm -hmm. for it but i think like as if we turn it into a positive like hopefully like we said this it started off and the the generation that we've got now for the women's football in 10 years, we know them legends coming through who have been there and it's not forgotten where, like I said, it always starts somewhere. We probably don't remember the past, past, past legends. So um, hopefully this is, like we said before, a stepping mm -hmm. stone and the girls get what they deserve. It's just, we just want you to get more, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the FA do have a legends program. Yes. Um, so we'll do little appearances. Um, like there was one, like over the year, I was at a, a, an appearance up in Liverpool, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for the FA, you know the women's the live Lionesses live program. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. On, so we do on little YouTube, bits. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so the like the old generation dabble, players. A sprinkle. <laughs> yeah. So we do get a little bit of uh, like work from it and whatever else. But you're not completely forgotten. You are in the is it the Hall of Fame? Yeah. I heard the English Football Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. Fame. That's yeah. A, it's a big deal. That you've got you've got like a there's um is there like a picture of you on the yeah, wall? Yeah, I think so. Or like some a, signed football boots yeah. or something. I um, remember him like emailing me after something just to put in there. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so what's in? Do you remember what's in your glass case? I'm sure it's like a white pair of signed football boots. Mm -hmm. Washed up. You <laughs> <laughs> said socks, then I was like, what? <laughs> socks. They'd be rotten now. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's, it's an absolute honour to be in, in the Hall of Fame, obviously, um, alongside some, some legends, legends, you know, like Jill Coulthard, uh, Kaz Walker, Yanks is in there, Rachel Brown, and then on the men's side, you've got Bex. Probably Bobby Moore. Stanley, and, yeah, yeah, all the old. Yeah. So it's, that, that is a, mm. a nice achievement, little like. touch, yeah. <laughs> So we've spoken a little bit about where we are now and what you've done in your career and so on, but there's a journey obviously to get there. So I want to hear a bit more about your journey. So you grew up in Walsall, West Midlands. Posh part. The posh part. <laughs> is it really the posh part? I'm not going to lie, I don't yeah. know what it is. Yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been, is that really the posh part? Nah, no. <laughs> my streets are all right. Say yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, you grew up there. Um, I know your dad is massive into football and that sort of thing. Was he your main inspiration? Uh, yeah, definitely, 100%. Because um, he used to play semi-professional amateur um, oh, okay. when I was growing up. And then my house backs onto a big field with like three football pitches on. So he'd take me over there most days. So that's kind of where it'll begin. But yeah, he's definitely my biggest inspiration. And I don't think if it was for him and my mum that I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved. Because I know you've got, I know you've got three sisters, and at times they've all kind of taken part in it and then eventually dropped off. I know your sister Becky; she's massively into her fitness and stuff now. Why was it for you the thing that you kept on going at? Why does it you keep keep going on with this this idea about football? Again, I think it was my dad. Um, <laughs> you just seen you were the yeah, best. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I was a tomboy growing up, so yeah. I grew up with boys. Mm. So boys love football. So that's that's Lazy. what I did. Yeah, like most days, um, like say playing on the field, and it just went from there on. Really, um, I joined the football team, first football team when I was eleven. That was an all girls okay. team. Um, obviously played in school, primary school, um, and back then it was an absolute nightmare. There was three teams in our league. And we played each other three times. That was our season. Oh, that was your draw. It was honestly, it was ridiculous. <laughs> there was no teams about whatsoever. There was no academies, yeah. no uh, school of excellence, and I didn't even know England existed mm. till I was, I think, it was probably about fifteen. It was crazy. Okay. Talking about your dad, he was also your coach as well for these teams, was he? Um, he didn't coach the first Birchills, the team, but he 
he helped coach Wolves when I moved to Wolves when I was 14. So, but it, his biggest role was taxi. Taxi, dad's yeah, taxi. taxi. <laughs> you know dad's when, like, when we were younger, like, he played, and there wasn't many girls' team. Do you ever play on the boys' team? Like, you hear stories of people, like, pretending they were a little little boy to, to play with the boys and have more football teams. Did you ever do anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I did play mixed football. So I played for the girls' team when I was 11. And I don't know if they folded, but then from about, I think, 13, 14, maybe, I played for a mixed, mixed oh, team. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, and there was a few girls. Yanks used to... Um, Yanks, Rachel Yankee played for an all boys team uh, and I think she cut her hair off short didn't she, she, yeah, she like get in there. and, and she, I think they all complained because they knew she was a girl because she was that good because I think there was a, a, a limit wasn't there at the time as to what age you could actually play for boys and girls yeah, teams as yeah, well and, and she I think she so, uh, passed, it. passed the, because she changed the name and yeah it's classic that isn't it it's good doing it like yeah. stories like that it's like now girls are allowed to just play there's more teams there's more things but that wasn't there though. That's what I always get back. Like you had to go through them barriers to to get just to play, just to play on a Saturday, Sunday, just to yeah. play, have a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, it's so interesting. It fascinates me to to see that, and it's like them barriers broken down now because of back mm-hmm. then. Because yeah, that's hopefully right. they just keep getting broken. But you say that you know you only found out about England when you were maybe about fifteen or so. Who were your your idols then in in? In football, I'm assuming they were all they were all blokes. Yeah, um, probably. I probably say I used to play left wing, so I probably I looked up to Ryan Giggs, David Ginola. Um, I used to live with Zinedine Zidane. He oh, was yeah. he, he was, was a boss. legend. He was Boston. Yeah, he was good. Um, and yeah, like you say, the first time I saw England or knew they were an England team was I was I'd been training with Wolves, and we was in the clubhouse after. And England women were playing Norway on the TV. Oh, okay. And I remember Sue Smith. I think they was losing about 7-0. <laughs> but I always remember Sue Smith playing. So she was like okay. one of the first women footballers yeah. That, yeah. that I knew of. Because she's only about a year or two older than us, I think. Sue. She, I yeah. think so. So she must have been really young playing for England. Yeah, I think she must well. I was, if I was 14, 15, she must have been 17, something mm-hmm. like that, when mm-hmm. she started playing for England. Mm-hmm. And back then they only had seniors, open age, and then under 18s. Oh, and okay. that's kind of when that's when my career kind of kicked off when I turned 16. So you're at Wolves at this particular point when you got into the England under 18s, is that right? Yeah. I just turned I think I just turned 16 and my manager sent me for a trial, England trial and uh yeah, yeah, that's where it all started. I got in under 16s, played under 18, sorry. Played there for 2 years and then when I turned 18, moved up to the seniors. Because you've just found out there's this England pathway, what were your ambitions in football at that particular age, at, at say 16? What were you thinking? Yeah, I think <clears throat> before I knew they were an England team, I think I just, just played because I enjoyed yeah, it. Enjoyed I didn't really it, yeah. think, I don't think I even thought I wanted to be a footballer. I think back then I wanted to be an ice cream ice cream man, yeah. woman, <laughs> honestly, or work in a chippy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do as a kid. I must have enjoyed my food. Yeah, so I only really started to take football serious probably, probably around 15, 16. So I think I saw England play and thought, right, I want to play for England. Um, but still played for enjoyment. And then as soon as I was entered into the, the trial and got into the under-18 teams, I thought that was it. And that's the season I moved to Everton because Everton were in the top league. Wolves were in the league below and I felt the need to move to improve. Yeah, yeah. So I moved to the top league. So that was 2000. So you would have been 17 going on 18. Is that right? Eight, yeah, yeah, 17. So it's 2000. So, you, you know, uh, yeah, you would have been 18, when, 18. If, if, at that particular time. And did, so when you moved to Everton then, did that automatically coincide with you go into the England setup? Which I would have been the, at Everton, was, wouldn't I? That would have been my saying, first so, year at Everton. Yeah. What, with your debut at England? Yeah. Do you remember what that felt like, though? Like, coming out with the, the shirt on and... Yeah, that was, was nerve-wracking. Like, it was... Because we played at uh, Velodrome in France. Yeah. So Marseille, we played, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, we played before. We played against France women. And then after we played, the World All-Stars were playing against the men's fresh, fre- uh, French national team. So, like, to start with, the stadium was, like... I think it held about 55,000 plus... Um, it was quite, you can quite imagine, it. yeah, they weren't there. And then it was building up and building up and building up. And then I come on at half time. I think the stadium, there weren't that many in there at half time. But, and then you come out after half time for the second half. And it was like, where did all these come from? Was yeah, like, yeah. I think there was like 55,000 people there. So it was like. That was your first time yeah, as well. It was you did. <laughs> That's, That's a memory you'll never forget. Yeah, that, that is feeling. one. 
that is one that I do remember. Me and Casey Stoney making our debut same on the day. same day. Yeah. You, you kind of make your, your debut in it. Just for me, when you're young, these things happen, and you're able to adapt to it quite quickly. For you, was it just, oh yeah, this is this is just the way it is? How how what was your mind thinking at that particular time? You know me, I'm quite laid back, yeah, so I, I just I kind of are. whatever. It is what it is. But yeah, I do I do actually remember um, receiving my letter for. Uh, the seniors. I was away with the under 18s at the time in Norway. I used to play left mid and then Hope played me left back for this game. Uh, and I must have done all right because then before I got home, I'd have got a, a letter with a call up for the seniors. Um, so that's how, that's how that came about. Left back. Yeah, and that's, then that was it. I was left back from then, then so on. So you played that one. You must play that well. You got into the team and then you st stuck in that position. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's quality. So. Well, it's just you were a rubbish left winger. Yeah, it? Left no back. pace. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's face it, Sue Smith was there in front of you for a good few years, wasn't she? So, And then Rachel Yankee was there as well. Yeah, so, would, no Skill chance. set wise, they had that those jinky little yeah. ones, didn't they? I can't. I've got no skills whatsoever. She's a left back. Just, I'm just it. simple. Yeah, I'm just simple, give and go, me. Yeah. yeah I, th I think you played all sorts of different positions in your career as well. Yeah, you? you played left back, Everton. centre back, oh, centre God. midfielder. Is that your favourite position? Um, left back. I'd probably say yeah, probably because yeah. I know, I know the game. If that may, but I quite, I think I quite enjoy your midfield. Yeah, yeah, because I, I like to play football, so I'd like to be that holding midfielder. Spread just, around. Yeah, bit of a Gareth Barry throwback sort. Gareth of thing. Barry. Yeah. I feel like yeah. if I played, I'd be like a defender. Yes. Yeah, You'd chop everyone. Yeah. Wouldn't you? I'd just be like. Bah! <laughs> yeah, I've Come seen, out even yeah. I've, I've seen well, not so only I've have I like, seen you fight I've seen you train and I've seen you yeah, train like out, you train with the blokes and when you kick the blokes end up you know your coach he, he's forced oh back. yeah he's took some shots to be fair oh. like <laughs> you've got to give credit to the coaches like if, whoever if it, holds you know when you uh, holding's that, just a hard harder than kicking itself yeah because you've got to hold that big pad and you're kicking it and he's totally like that thick and then the body armors are like that oh, so, God, so to, to be fair you get used to it yeah so yeah, I'd um, put my taekwondo pads on and defend. Yeah, I think you'd be good, good in goal as well. Because I'm so long. Imagine, you wouldn't even nah. need to, to be use, fair, I've got you good reaction. use your hands, you could just get yeah. your leg up there. I've got good reaction, so maybe I'd just be like... <laughs> <laughs> I never know, you never see. Next um, next step in my life, after yeah, taekwondo. Know. Yeah, exactly, you never know. There's still time. I know. There's still time. So you join Everton, you work under Mo Marley and Keith Marley. How much of a, an influence did they have on you and your career? Because you said earlier on, it kind of, it almost kick-started. Yeah, things. massive. Like I say, Mo has taught me everything, along with Hope. Hope was a great manager. Um, but Mo is, she's, she's great, Mo. And any, anyone, any player that has worked under Mo, they'll say the same thing. She's just, as a coach, she knows her stuff. She's brilliant. As a manager, she's got that, the man management skills that you need. And she's just... <laughs> A lovely lady um so much so she even uh because we didn't get paid back in the day yeah and um, we used to travel to training tuesdays thursdays or was it no it's fridays um and then play sundays and she used to put me and farrah up oh, in her house good. overnight save us traveling it wouldn't happen these days, would it? Yeah. Imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Imagine. But yeah, so... Uh, imagine, can I just um, stay over, please, for some training? Yeah. <laughs> you might, I don't know. <laughs> he fed you as well, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> oh God. Fed us is not the word. <laughs> Honestly, we'd get in from training Friday night and we'd have a big bowl of chicken pasta with like two jacket potatoes. Honestly, it was <laughs> just fueling us ready for Sunday. Ready, ready for the big game. But yeah, she made, Mo played a massive, massive part in, in, in my career. Do you feel like people like that, like, change your life and made you go on that path like you said that they did and you'll you'll always be grateful for them moments yeah of course um I'll, I'll you know i'll never be thankful enough for what mo did for That's me um and like i say she taught me everything so 102 caps might have been two or even none do you know yeah. what i mean so she yeah she's she's had a massive massive influence on my uh career throughout so when you joined were Everton, I'm assuming, were bigger than Liverpool at that particular time in the women's game. Yeah, yeah, we, we I was were. Say that what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the women's you can't game. Can't say that in the men's <laughs> game. You definitely can't game, say that yeah. in the men's game. Um, yeah, we were always top two. Um, Everton, like there was, the leagues, it's pretty similar to now. In the league now, you got probably three, four teams that are, are competing every year for the yeah. title. Yeah. But when my generation, it was us and Arsenal, so we were like the top two teams. But we. We never, uh, we never it was won the, the abyss, league, did we? Won a few cup, yeah. cup competitions, but never the league. They were too tough. They were too good, Arsenal were them. 
But they were, they were also, you know, when you think about Arsenal in that particular period in the mid-2000s up until the WSL era, they were virtually professional anyway, weren't they, as a team? They, they had the structure right, the, the relationship with the men's team. You know, they had a close relationship and there was funding put into the women's team. What Mo was doing at Everton was single-handedly it was yes. she, she yeah. was funding that team with a lot of the things that she did yeah you're right because the, the arsenal girls because obviously uh, through england we, we had relationships with yeah. the, the girls so i knew, knew them and they used to they were trained pretty much full-time um and they used to work for the for the for arsenal men so you, they used to be like the laundry people washing oh, the football okay. kits and stuff like that so, so they, they had they'd jobs even be there they'd be around the place all the time yeah and they got that they got paid for for, for jobs there so Whereas that's like crazy you said. that, like thinking about that now, like the, imagine the the Euros team now. Mm. Leah Williams some scrubbing uh, yeah. thing is pants. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Maguire's pants. Ketier. <laughs> <laughs> good thing, good job. Things have changed. I know. <laughs> yeah. But the, the influence that Mo had on on Merseyside football, but not only Merseyside football, on the England setup as well. I don't think you know can be praised enough, really. And and every player I speak to from that era. Has got a lot. Of, I've got a lot of time for Mo because she allowed me to come into the Everton women's. Team. Do you remember the? Do you remember the first time I jumped on the coach? First coach trip. I remember. Yeah. The first, do you remember where it was? Just like a quiz. Th- yeah. oh, no. yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I it remember. I remember. Yeah. Memory, so I'm like, testing. I'm remember testing when it. I got on the coach? I can't remember. It was against Bristol. Bristol away was Bristol it? Bristol away. But I remember yeah. chatting to you. I remember you were injured again. 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 <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, we'll get to <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I remember was I, I approached her and said, look, I'm, you know, on behalf of the BBC and the Liverpool Echo, I want to come and, and report on this, this game. And she effectively said, yeah, come and you can even come on the coach to the London trips and everything. You have to pay for your room. Yeah. But, you know, you can come on the coach. Transport. It was an open, it was just an open door, open arm policy. Yeah, you couldn't and do I that learned now. so much from that two or three years when I was on that coach up and down the country. And it was all thanks to Mo Marley. Yeah, she's she's great, isn't she? Everyone loves her. No one has a bad word to say about Mo. Speaking when you were with Mo, and you stayed there, can you remember what colour her bin was? <laughs> Basically, was it purple? Ooh, purple. Now you've said that. Purple. I must have gone out to that bin a few times. <laughs> She's never put, put a few jacket potatoes in there and a bit yeah, of pasta. Yeah. <laughs> the second one, the second one you never let. Uh, I can't. I don't want to say purple because I can't be hundred oh, so percent no, sure. Yeah, we're going to go for no. We're going to. Well, uh, we'll probably pop up whether it was purple on the uh, on the on the video. Of this. Yeah, I have a little like thing flashing yeah. here. Ding, 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 with the anyway, bin. back to the actual. Anyway, ba- yeah, back to the back to the proper question. So <laughs> you were at Everton for a year. The, the there's a story as to why you left Everton. And that was to go to Fulham. I'll hand that over to you. Why did you Why did you leave Everton and go to Fulham? Um, I left Everton to go to Fulham. Uh, it was full time, so it was uh, obviously you train every day. Um, so full time professional, and the next the, step. Yeah, the next step basically. You get paid, and the players there. They had some great players. You know, not only English players, but international players. Um, so that was the, the big selling point for me. Um, but you had to drop a league as well. You had to play in the yeah, Southern Division. We had to drop a league and then work our way up. Which that's crazy. That that there was a bit more professional, but it was the league below. Well, that was because yeah. Mohamed Al Fayed came in, didn't he? And he funded the women's team. Oh, okay. And he wanted the FA to actually take you take, know, take over. Take, yeah, take over, that's, didn't he? yeah. He put, I think he put pumped five million to the women's side, and I think the first year they were in they were in the, like the third third league and they won that league and then I joined them the when they're in the second league um, but the idea of that was he was hoping that the FA would take over yeah, and yeah. create some professional yeah. league but that didn't happen so it was like full time for three years and then it was part time after that so oh, okay so and in that particular time you're quite you're record breaking as well because you got promoted first season which if you're professional you're going to get promoted but then it was a test the following season, and then you went and wiped the board and won the tr- domestic treble. Yeah. What was that, what was that and like? And the for Community you? Shield. Don't forget that one. Because yeah, <laughs> you, you won the FA Cup the year before in 2002. I'm testing my memory now. That was, and that's televised, so you're on television, everything's great. But what was it like for you as a team to just wipe the floor with everybody in that second season? Can you remember that? that? It's a great achievement, isn't it? Yeah. That's what you. That's She's what like you... so laid back. She's <laughs> like, yeah. I teared up. 
Skal Skål, det, Skål, det, <laughs> det er der, I'm one. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. No, no, it... You know, we were anyway. saying before, anyway. right? Um, cool. Rachel was like, you know more about it <laughs> yeah. than she knows about to sell. So it's definitely coming out now. Yeah. <laughs> you no, do right. know more. Shall I, shall I do it? It's because, uh, you know... Just let's ask you questions about okay, Rachel. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do that. Fine and fair enough. Um, oh, Ooh. there we go. Oh, what's this? There's a call. See what it is. You might be secondary fire. We're probably back in about ten minutes. That's oh my god! This is the this middle. Is actually, this is actually happening. This it's is actually the middle of, of, of the of the podcast. Um, you go and do what you need to do. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> Mid interview, and Rachel has to leave to put a fire. Rachel has just left us. We are in the fire station. How are you enjoying the sofa? Then? Got it, Rachel left, but I'm so happy that we got it on camera. Yeah. Max, you'll have to step in. <laughs> oh, she's back. There she's she back. Is. back. Honestly. I'd love to say like, like, Oh, get your there, microphone yeah. first. Get your microphone first. Yeah, yeah myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly. Go on, what are you saying? Yeah, as I was gonna say, I'd love to say it was a blazing inferno, but... It was the tiniest grass, grass fire that I could have pissed on, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we did not plan that. That, that was like not a setup or nothing. Not at all. That not was like real life. Real She's been life. gone for like five hours. Yeah, five exactly. hours, yeah. Like yeah. Three hours Just later. had a shower, wash all the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> freshens up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that was cool. That was like good to see as well. Like for me, uh, I... Things like this fascinate me and stuff. So I was like, as soon as they went off, I was thinking, where's she going? Wait, what is it? What is it? Is it a building? And is it this? But because you were waiting, you were waiting to hear something when the announcement. So what, what did that tell you? Yeah, so you basically left? it'll say Hanley one. Um, and it'll tell you what kind of fire it is. So that was secondary. So it's usually like a bin fire, grass fire. Or, um, but then it'll say, sometimes it'll say RTC, road traffic collision, house, house uh, fire. And then okay. when, you, when you hear persons reported, that's when you have to get a sprint on. Oh, is that oh. what it is? Yeah, so the it t- basically tells you what it is, what you're going to. But what's um, the big, big one? Like, what's it it'd be house one? fire persons oh, reported. Oh. Yeah, or RTC persons reported, which we had we had house fire, I think, two weeks ago. And me and Sam were in BA first, and that was oh, really? fatal. Oh, so, was yeah. it? Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, today we had a little grass fire. Yeah, we had a little grass fire. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, see so. four kids wandering across the field, are you thinking, okay, yeah. oh, shit. That was, that was an experience and a half. And I think anybody who watched this podcast, because obviously we have listeners as well, but anybody who watched it and watched everybody kind of... Pat, well, well, me and you, she was there yeah. like, I'll do, panic as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, the cameras. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I do do though? It still makes me jump. Yeah. And like sometimes, especially in the middle of the night, if you're like fast asleep, and like you wake up, I, I sit up in a V sometimes and I'm thinking like, where am I? And I'm like putting things on, I'm putting my clothes on backwards and everything. Cause obviously I have to put my yeah, red yeah. t-shirt and stuff. So it's like. But well, we seen you when you were running, you had like that Balaclava thing on your head. Yeah, yeah, the flash on your that's, head. Yeah, for flash. Well, just going to Nick Sutton here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the skull so we yeah. adapt, I'm joking. <laughs> just scares <laughs> coming out of me. <laughs> oh no, yeah, it was impressive. I was dying to jump on. And, yeah. well done, and well done as well for responding as quickly as you did. Yeah. So I'll say like... for about two minutes, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no they've, they've probably been upstairs, so that's well, make the way down. back to the actual podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Where we, was we, we, second half? We were speaking about your Fulham days, so we'll repeat over that again, because you won the domestic treble in your second season. Uh, can you remember much about that? Because you had such a great team at that time. You had Rachel Yankee. And, I mean, there was just so many players. Yeah, ph- phenomenal team then. Chaps, Yanks, Rachel MacArthur... Mary Phillips. So we had, like, I think we had six or seven internationals, England internationals, a couple of Norwegians. If it was Charlton, I remember playing Charlton in the FA Cup final one year, and I think it could have been, that was the that year, I think we won the treble. Uh, I always remember the Community Shield. I don't know why. I think it's because... It must have been your favourite. My favourite. It must have been, because you, like, you remember it so often. Yeah, it must have it been was, a moment. The Community Shield was, um, do you know what it was? My sisters had just had... Um, was it, was it Evie? My sister had a little girl. Oh, and I okay. t- took a baby on the pitch. That, that's, <laughs> yeah. how, that's why I remember it. And it was summer and I had the best tan ever. Yeah. <laughs> See, great yeah, memories. Yeah. Tan and a baby. Um, but yeah, I, th- I have a lot of fond memories, um, Fulham. Like, we used to play up a treat. Like, we used to train, like, double sessions Tuesdays and Thursdays. And me and uh, Ronnie, um, she's Irish, but we used to go to... Um, What's name? New Malden, the area where uh, we used to train, and we used to buy going to uh, fancy uh, fancy dress secondhand shops, and we used to come back in like fancy like uh, polka dot dresses and stuff. We just used to, honestly, we, yeah, it was the best time. 
Fulham were probably my best footballing days oh, along good. with Everton. Um, but we did have some laughs. And one of the things I do remember, because it's been on the television many times in your Fulham days, is you were a star. Did you know this, by the way, Bianca? I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting for a star percent. of Bend It Like Beckham. We're in the background. <laughs> <laughs> was you? Yeah. Keira Knightley scored the winner past me or something the, like the that. The defendant like, against Keira Knightley was atrocious. Was you in, so you were in the film? Yeah, we're in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my like God, I've seen that loads of times. Yeah, 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 we're the team that played against Keira Knightley's team. Yeah. Oh so, my God, that's yeah. bad. So I'm going to go over and watch that now. So you got to watch it to the end though, because we're, yeah. right we're dancing at the yeah. end. It's like, <laughs> yeah. just so awkward. Oh, that's vast. That's but yeah, so, so Claim to fame, that. Forget the football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in Bend It Like Beckham. So you let Kira Knightley score a free head. I messaged because it was on the telly a few yeah, weeks ago. I messaged you and said, "What? You, what, what sort of defending?" We'll watch is it that? again. <laughs> <laughs> was she, me was she any good at it, or was it like a thousand takes? Just no, no. <laughs> she was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was a tryer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, give her that. You say that you know the, the time at Fulham was one of the best, along with Everton. Then you moved to Everton again once. Once Fulham didn't get what they wanted, which was full-time professional football in England. You moved to Everton. What was the reason behind that? Because that was about 2004 when you went back to yeah, Everton. Yeah, I went back after three years. So I did two years full-time at Fulham and I stayed on for the third year, which they went to semi-pro. Yeah. And it didn't really work out because of the commuting and everything else. So, um, yeah, I went back to Everton and I, I think I, I felt like I owed it to, to Mo and Keith, to be honest, because the only reason yeah. why I moved was because it was full-time football, paid job. Um, and I did enjoy my time there. So I thought... You know, I'll, go I'll go home. back there. And I think that's when, is it that the year that Farrah and Jill come across as well? So uh, Farrah was the same year as you. Jill came 2006, yeah, two years later. Yeah, I think we attracted, later. when Farrah came, we attracted a few more players, mm. didn't we, as well? So, so it's like, and then Natasha Jowie joined 2007 and so on. And then when you look at your time at Everton, there was a number of near misses, wasn't there, in terms of trophies. 2005, missed out in the FA Cup final. But then the League Cup final you won against Arsenal in 20, 2008. What was that like, like for you guys? Because you were just you were so close against Arsenal on many occasions, but to do it in a major final, finally come over them, finally getting the one over on them. What was that like as a group? Oh, it was it was great. You know, like you say, we've been second to Arsenal for years, um, been so close, but never actually beat them or or won a trophy. So to win against Arsenal in the final was it was phenomenal, uh, and it meant everything to us at the time. We it's like all that work you've done in all them years, it's. Paid off, and paid off finally. Yeah. Was that the game I gave away a penalty? Or was that no, the, no, we'll, talk, we'll, okay. talk we'll talk about that further down the line. Because Amy Kane scored the winner in that one after seven minutes, and then you just had to hold on then for the entire. See, the I love this game. though. Like you're like, did I score? There? I know. <laughs> you're asking him still again. <laughs> I know, I'm like, well, the thing is, you know, if I did my job properly, yeah, I should yeah. know everything about all the players and all the matches, and uh, you know, it's I like to think it's that though, yeah. Yeah, I'm winging the old thing. Are you stato or autistic? Yeah, I am both. I'm both. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it, it was a few years until your next um, win, and it was against Arsenal again. It was the 2010 FA Cup final. Yeah, I remember this one. And you remember this one? <laughs> this one yeah, because you've just mentioned what you did yeah. in that one. You gave away a penalty. What was that moment like for oh, you? Oh, God, that, that was... I think, to be honest, I think it was... We were, uh, we were two, on up, two on up at this point. Mm. And then, yeah, I took uh, Gemma Davidson out. She's a little whippet. Yeah. Uh, proper quick. So yeah, I took her out in the box and then uh, they equalised, obviously, and it, which took it to extra time. And then I think Tash Day we scored in the last minute of extra time. So we, so we won, thankfully. Imagine if we would have lost, it would have felt like shit, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but that's all part of the game, isn't it? Like you yeah. can't, it's not, obviously the one moment can change it, but at the same time, doesn't mean it's the whole reason why, let's say it did go 2-2. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can't blame yourself for the penalty. I oh, know, yeah. You had to be Unless done. you're in the England final and then... then <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. You're like, what did you do there? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you, you started picking up a few trophies and you were overcoming Arsenal in odd games here and there, but they we, we, we can't forget that they were the big juggernaut, weren't they, really, in women's football? And it was hard, really, for Everton to compete. Is that right? Yeah. They, they dominated the league for, for years. Um and again, because they had some of the best players in the world um, in this country, the likes of Rachel Yankee, Alex Scott, Faye White, Kelly Smith, you know, so they had a, a great team. Um, but like I say, we was, we was always this close. Um, unfortunately, we never won the league. Um, but like I say, we won FA Cup and, and League Cup, which, which was great for us. Um, 
But yeah, they're, they're unbeatable. So then what was the reasoning for leaving Everton then and going to Birmingham? Because you'd had this good rapport with the fans, with Mo and Keith. You, you know, you were, you know, and at that point, I feel like an adopted scout. So you were, how, you were how, one of us. How long know? were you there for? Sorry, before. Um, eight years, I was at Eight Everton. years it yeah. was. So you were there for eight years yeah. and then, then you moved on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think like the last year or so, I think I just felt like I needed a new challenge. You know, things come a bit stale, a bit stale yeah. Um, and that, that's the reason why I moved to Blues. Plus, they, they had a decent team and it was nearer to home because yeah. obviously we still, we weren't professional. So I was still doing the miles and and like I say, I felt like I just needed that that new challenge. Football for me was, I think it's probably where, you know, the last few years of my career, I probably didn't really enjoy football as yeah. much as I did. And I think that might have been the beginning of it. Because mm -hmm. even when I moved to Blues, I, I had a great time there, but still I didn't have that love like I did for the, the first, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it kind of all started to change for me. It does sparkle out though, doesn't it? Like you've started off, everything's so high and you achieve so much as well. And then to stay there for like a number of years and sport does get a little bit more like repetitive. Yeah. And then you, you start chasing them big wins or you start chasing them different challenges and moments. And you totally understand and relatable to like probably everyone who does sport. Like, yeah. You're always looking for something a little bit more that can test you or challenge you. That's right. You need to, just to you like change it challenge. up a bit. Yeah. yeah, and that's probably the biggest. You get bored, don't you? You, you do. do. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do training every day, so all the time. It's like, come on, just someone new come in or something. Yeah, new opponent. Let the gym change, change the color of the mat. Paint anything the wall. like, yeah, it'd be, <laughs> make me feel better. Yeah, <laughs> I might kick a little bit better then. Change the color of the mat. It'll yeah. help. It'll help. Um, <laughs> but you won an FA Cup with them. After extra time and then the penalty shootout, penalties, yeah. you scored one of the penalties. And that. So there's another trophy. So you, by this point, you've won everything domestically. Number of times you've won things mm -hmm. domestically. You've won a number of FA Cups and League Cups and more trophies than you can actually probably count. You had your ACL injury, didn't you, in yeah. 2013? Was that part of the thing? Is this the same time around Birmingham, your injury? Yeah, I did my first knee in 2013 at Birmingham um, and then recovered... Did I move to Knotts between? I think yeah, I'm you, still yeah. recovering yeah. Uh, when I moved to Knotts. Um, ACL is like me. devastating, isn't it, for oh, yeah, it's football a, especially? And yeah, it's the biggest injury, isn't it? Like the longest time out and just such a like... It's just draining as well. Like the, the rehab you've got to do to get back and then, then you get worried about com probably being on the pitch again. Do you feel like yeah, you're the same it's, person it's, when you... Re um, rehabbed it back and got back playing do you feel like yeah, you... I think you lose that bit of confidence don't you and you mm. get that that bit of fear um, I know I definitely did and to be honest I've done it twice and the first time I learned so much from doing it the second time same from doing yeah. the first the first time I, I had the operation on the I think it was the Thursday I come out of hospital the Friday and I was in the gym on the, on the Saturday and all Can't I could do, do is arm bike. <laughs> and I remember falling asleep, like literally falling asleep on the arm bike. I think I went back far too early. And the second time I had a good week off. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, that's definitely way too early. I was still on the, the Coco de Mala thing. <laughs> I was like, out for a week. Yeah. But then you was fighting about two yeah, months yeah. later. <laughs> that rescued me. It so took me 14 months, you two months. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So you decide that you want to leave Birmingham to go to Notts County. Um, you, go, you go to Notts County and then it... You'd hoped it'd be a new chapter. Is that what you're thinking in terms of, you know, finding a love for the game again, you know, after, after leaving Birmingham? Yeah, so from Birmingham, I moved across to Notts County again, probably still trying to find that love for the game. I did enjoy my time at Birmingham, but again, I think I was still, I, don't, I didn't love the right game as wave. much. Yeah, 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 so I thought, let's move again. <laughs> <laughs> Spice things up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and did it work? No, it didn't. <laughs> but the reason why it didn't work wasn't because there was anything wrong with Notts County. It was, you did your other race, you did your other knee, didn't you? Your, yeah. your other race. Yeah, it was nothing to do with the club. The, the club were great, the players and, you know, the staff were great. Um, but yeah, I just recovered from my first one, played, like you said, I think I played about four games then two 90s and then did the other one. And then, uh, that was it. Well, that, that kind of ended my career without knowing. Um, I didn't plan to finish playing football after doing that second knee. I just kind of, just what happened, I think. Did I, you like rehab it? Like you were going to still come back and yeah, like compete yeah. as a footballer still? Or did you like, did it just like halfway through, just go, you know what, I finished? Did, yeah, what yeah happened? I, I still went back to the club and yeah. still went uh, for rehab and saw the physio. Um, it's crazy though, isn't it? Like... You've done through all that. You've done all them games. 
the injury happened, but then you just you you knew a little bit before that that you wasn't loving it the same. But then the injury and the the time coming back, it just just must have hit you, and you must have just known. Like, just, yeah, I'm ready now. I'm I'm done. I'm yeah. hang my boots and up. do you know what? And I think it's probably helped because if I if I was still had that passion and love for the game when I did both my knees. I think I would have been, I think the first one I was still a little bit like, yeah, still love the game. But yeah. I think it would have killed me to, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That I'd, I mean the devastating I've that you've been case. injured yeah. again. But I think it kind of helped that I didn't love the game as much as I did and having these injuries. So I kind of, it kind of helped me come away from football, I think. Do you feel like that made your path go into what you are now? Uh, yeah. I think so because so I, like I did work in a new I did work in a special needs school for probably the last uh, I think when I was at Blues and when I was at Knotts I worked in a special needs school for five years like working with kids with behavioural difficulties autism um, so I did that for five years and then I joined the fire service I didn't get in I applied for West Mids which is my area and didn't get in um, what to the fire service my local one yeah. <gasps> She just put out a grass fire. People. <laughs> grass fire. House. Yeah. House, house, building. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't get into uh, West Mids and then uh, applied for staffs and, and, and joined, joined staffs. But to be honest, it's something I've always wanted to do. When I was 16, I went to my local fire station, you know, oh, work okay. experience yeah. in school. And I went on work experience there. And, and from that, then on, that's kind of when I thought, this is what I want to do. Um, but obviously, because of football, that was like priority that come first. So I didn't join till I was 31. <coughs> no, 30, so young. 30, yeah, <laughs> 35. So this is my sixth year in. So That's yeah, impressive. I'm a late starter. So you knew when you were younger you wanted to do it deep down, but your football took over and then you fell back in love with it. And Yeah, after the love of ice cream and chips, yeah, it, was, it was fire <laughs> service. <laughs> But just dragging it back to football for a second, because let's not forget, you know, you had a big international career as well with England. Um, you 102 caps, eight goals. It's hard to kind of sum it up in just a few words. But what did that mean for you for England? Because it was such a massive part of your, your footballing career. Yeah, it's my life, isn't it? Yeah, I took over it. Um, uh, do you know, I'm, I'm one of these people. Um, I'm quite laid back. And I think other people are more proud of me than what I am myself. Yeah. And it weren't until I received my gold cap in the glass box that I finally thought, you know what, I've done all right here. Um, and that's probably the most proudest moment in the whole of my career um, that I've actually felt proud, if that makes yeah. sense. Obviously, playing for England, putting on the shirt, you feel, you feel proud. Um, but I think when I received that box, with the, like I say, with the gold cap, and that's when I probably thought, yeah... I've done all right. No, you've done more than all right. You've right. achieved a lot. You've got a lot. You have um, played of the year twice, I think. Twice, twice. yeah. Twice, well, that's Fine, not, yeah. not to come by. 102 caps, like you said, you've won a lot. And honestly, you should be proud of yourself more than you, you let on to yourself. Right. Well. Are there, any, are there, any, games, are there <laughs> any games for England that stick out for you? As Definitely. Um, obviously, playing in World Cups, championships are always big. But there's two that probably stand out for me. And that's playing in my 100th cap. As captain, yeah. that's what Hope used to do. If you, uh, if you, okay. when you on your own as a cap, you should make your captain. Um, playing against that was Croatia away. I think we won like seven nil, six yeah. nil, and I scored in that game. Oh, that's, but the that's biggest a good one. one. <laughs> the biggest one for me is probably playing uh, in my hometown, Warsaw, at Bescot Stadium. Um, and my nan was there. My nan, she supported me yeah. all, all my career, um, but she she was never able to get to any games because I was always miles away. Um, but obviously this one at Warsaw, she came um, and we won. We beat them four nil and I scored Amazing. twice. Two you scored, headers. Oh, you yeah. better. Hit me on the head. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was the, probably the the most memorable game for me. Bescot Stadium in front of my nan, family, friends scoring two. Yeah, because that was just like before the Euros, wasn't it? That was in the build up to the Euros, yeah, wasn't it? In a friendly match. Qualifier, yeah. wasn't it? That one. Yeah. Any so then, any others that stick out at all? Any worst? Any worse, yeah. I've got, you got I've two a few shockers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't got a long enough time yeah. for this. Yeah, no time I for think that. everyone's got more worse, but there's a, a bet. that's what makes the best best. Yeah. I, I, think think for you, I think for you probably, would you agree that the, the worst part of your England career was that period when you got injured against France before the 2007 World Cup? Lost your place to Casey Stone, oh, yeah, was who was a centre back yeah. who played in a left, left back. back, and he didn't get really get placed I, back in no. the team for about four years, did you? Yeah, it took a while because there was Casey, and then there was Steph, weren't there? Mm, so, yeah. 
but yeah, that was that was a, a blow. And I think the biggest one was going to try, uh, China when it was World, World Cup, Cup 2007. Yeah. And I was the only outfield player who didn't play a minute. We lost oh. in the quarterfinals to America. I don't know what the score was. But I think she even played the keepers before me. Really? So I didn't get a kick. My dad was fuming when he moved. <laughs> oh, God, watch. you've been all that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they come to watch. seconds. <laughs> he was raging. Um, but yeah, that was that was awful. That was I could have just threw in the towel then, but I thought, you know what? No. I'm not and the thing is, it though, we talk about yeah, redemption that's... stories, Bianca. You know, you've you've had a number of redemption stories in your career. For you, your redemption was you did actually make your World Cup appearances as starting left back in 2011. So it went full circle. Yeah. So yeah, it went from not playing, kicking kicking a ball, too many. <laughs> yeah. To then starting. Um, but you know, football's ruthless, ruthless, isn't it? You're in or out. You can one minute you'd be the bloody star of the team playing week in, week out. Yeah. Next minute, you might not even be on the bench, you might yeah. be in the stand. You know what I mean? So it's just it's, it's like that level, things. isn't it? That top level, and it's just it is brutal sometimes. Sport can be cruel, so, it but it can. can be so kind as well at the same time. And like right. you said, your best memories you remember, but you've probably got more worse than so cherish the best ones. You take the eyes with the lows, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so when you got into the fire service, like, how did you have to get into it? Like, did you, what test did you have to do? Because it always fascinates me to, you always see things on TV and you think, do you have to do these massive tests or circuits or put out fires? And yeah, no, just it's... take us through it. There's quite a few phases. So there's obviously the, you just got to show an interest that you, you want to join the fire, that you can work weekends, work shifts, this, that, the other. And then you're invited in to, um, I did a maths. No, you have to have maths and English. And then there was a, a like an emotional, emotions test. So you're given like a question um, and then they give you six, four statements and you have to pick what best describes you. So they're looking for patterns. So you basically, if you're an emotional person, then they'll see through the, all the questions that you're emotional or something. Uh, okay. or. So you can't it's be it's too complicated, emotional. but they're, they're forget them ones. The the physical one, <laughs> you, you have the JRTs, which is the job related test. So you there's like a ladder climb. You have to climb up a ladder, lean back and look down. So prove you're not scared of heights. Um, then there's one um, like a, an endurance one where you you walk up and down with like the hose reel, carrying stuff, carrying a weight. And you have to do that in a certain time. And yeah. then there's one called like the rat run. So they basically put like a mask on you, blindfold you, and you have to crawl through this oh, area wow. in a certain amount of time and then come back. I'd freak out. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah, I, so I want to go. Like, <laughs> you want to go? I'm like, come on, let <laughs> no, me see if I can win. Yeah, it was good fun. And then the last one was just basically an interview and a presentation about, um, I did mine on, on what I'm most proud of. So you're given four options, what you want to do your presentation on. Uh, Please tell me you said the 100 caps. I did talk did about you? Oh, there you go. I talked about um, football and Kilimanjaro because I played oh, Kil Kilimanjaro. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, that, that was in impressive. there. So that was in there. Wait, so the Kilimanjaro thing. Just take a break from from. You forgot about that one, didn't you? Hmm? I know we should have forgot about that one. I forgot, did forget about that one. That's, that surprised <laughs> me uh, because you went up Kilimanjaro. Not only did Rachel go up Kilimanjaro, you played a game of football. Nine, I mean, nine, yeah, world record it is. So it's uh, Kilimanjaro is about 18,000 feet high in it. Something like that. How long yeah. does it take you to climb that? Oh, uh, well, we climbed it in uh, about six days. So we, we stopped at different points. Yeah. Um, and then at the top, we climbed at the, the last part of the climb was like we started at midnight. I think we got to the top about eight o'clock in the morning, two hours. And then like we made a pitch like the, it's, it's, there's a big flat sandy area, uh, area at the top. So they use like salt for the pitch. Um, did they actually? We had goals at the top because you, you have porters yeah. that carry everything. Um, we had corner flags, and then we played ninety minutes of football. Honestly, it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> you can imagine because you, you run from here to the doors there, and you'd be like, because <gasps> like obviously the, the altitude, no altitude it was a yeah. And then when you try and smash the ball because it was in sand, the ball would just like roll <laughs> three yards in front of you. But I was dying most of the time, just like what it, was, was, the it was comical. What was the score? Um, I think we won two. 2-1. Did you score? So, did I? No. Still, still. Yes, yeah, so I think there's about 50 of us that climbed it, women from all over the world. So that's, uh, American International, Laura Lindsay. Oh, okay. um, Is this for Canadian. charity? Yeah, or? it was like women's rights and all that. So yeah. um, it was it was for that, um, like equality and all. That's impressive. There's that a life area. story. That's a good yeah. one. That's a great well, it one. Was, it was, honestly, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. 
but you were, you'd be blowing. You'd literally run to the and you'd have to like walk for like a minute to get your breath back. It was yeah. hard. But yeah, I think 50 of us climbed it. I think the two didn't make it because of the altitude sickness. But yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, so you can, was, you can get like physically like yeah, sick like, just from walking up from it. Yeah, can't you? we was one of the base camps. You can like hear something like gipping it. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I've always wanted to do something like that. You know, like a something really different, like mm. climbing. Yeah. I've said Everest, but then I've watched a few films and I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know about <laughs> that. Days, you um, yeah. But no, that's impressive. You should, inspiring. It's yeah, inspiring. It's, you should do it. It's good. honestly, it's good. It was a good. Next time good. you go up, let me know. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Bring me bib. <laughs> <laughs> your bib. <laughs> and your girly gloves. Yeah. Put you in the net. Yeah, I'd be like. Oh. <laughs> we spoke about this a little bit earlier about you know you always have it. I remember you and I speaking about this a number of years ago, and I said to you, "What's your succession plan?" And you said to me, I want to be a firefighter. It came completely out of the blue. And it's something that you've had inside you for a long time, isn't it? You know, is, mm-hmm. it, is it fulfilling those, um, those ambitions that childhood Rachel thought the job was going to be? Yeah, 100%. It, it's cliche, but it is the best job in the world. Is it? Yeah, I'd put it up there with playing football. It's, it's that good because I work with great people. They, they make it, to be honest. The boys I work with, they, they make the job. Um, and obviously when you do go into a house fire and pull someone out, yeah. you can imagine how rewarding that is. Um, like you're saving someone's life and yeah. like you're giving yourself in service to, to everyone out there. And That's it. To be it's honest, inspiring. It is. It is. I've had a, to be honest, we've had one house fire where I've had to pull someone out. Um, but other than that, I've not had anything, any uh, life-saving incidents, yeah. few like car accidents and stuff. But to be honest, I've done a bit of work. There's a, one of the lads that were on my training course for the fire service. So he joined when I joined. He's got his own uh, business called Rapid Fire. Yeah. So, you know, all like Coronation Street, Emmerdale, Peaky Blinders, they do all like the, the fire safety oh, okay. uh, for those uh, yeah. films or whatever. Film sets. So we, I've, I've done a few jobs for him. So I've been in, I've, um, was it Peaky Blinders? Yeah, Peaky Blinders. I've done bit of uh, Emmerdale. God, you're a movie star, really? She's been in Ben's movie star. Like Beth Ben, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peaky Blinders, yeah, Emmerdale, but, the yeah. So that's, that's it, really. But no, I think I'll, uh, I'll be in this job now. But when you look back when on your I'm football old. career, what, you know, what, you've worked with some amazing people. Jill Scott went and won the jungle. She's one of your, one of your good mates, isn't she, as yeah, well? Yeah, Jilly. Did you vote for her? Yeah. Did you? Oh, good. I thought and she be- was boss. I thought she was boss, yeah. <laughs> She was me. great. She was great. She was so real down to Yeah. Her. As soon as I knew she was going in, I knew Just she normal. was winning. Yeah, she That's is. what was nice. Yeah. And it was great because like at the start, I don't feel like she had that much airtime for because the, there's that many people yeah. in there. But then you saw more of her as the weeks went on and there was less people in there. But yeah, she's everybody loves Jill. I've got some good stories about Jill. In the middle of the night, you know, you need the toilet in the middle of the night, pitch black. So Jill goes to the toilet. Next minute, I felt a hand touch you. Touch me, yes. <laughs> Places that you probably shouldn't. I'm like, Jill, wrong bed. She was trying to get in my bed. She thought it was her own bed. <laughs> but yeah, me and Jill, we used to be up sometimes, like, because you can't sleep when you're yeah, away, yeah. especially after games. We'd be up telling stories at four o'clock in the morning. Mm. Jill would be telling yeah. me about all her little secret stories. That and she, they're the uh, friendships you make on yeah. the sport trips and stuff. And it is. The, it's, it's great. The memories you make. And create. But no, yeah, she did fantastic. And I'd love to go in the jungle one day. You're, you're, yeah, that's right. To go you on should in. do something. Yeah. You know what I'd like Get to do? Get me on, SAS. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, SAS. yeah, my, my friend, Jay Jones, she went on in. She smashed it, like, did really yeah, well on did, SAS. Yeah, she did, yeah. She got, was it, was it, to give it a go. That a lot of brutal, though. They mentally, mentally yeah. crash you down, don't was they? It, didn't she, she did just, so well. Didn't she just drop out just before, like, the final round? Is that the, what happened? The, I, feel, I feel like they, they messed her over a little bit. She definitely should have been in the final. Um, when was she didn't save someone or something. But she saved herself. Oh, yeah, that was the last series, Yeah, what just gone. But the one in the water, was it the yeah, one in the water? Yeah, and they were like, because she didn't, like, give it up in time. Yeah. Jade, you should have got through. Should have been in the final. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's brutal. But, but yeah, you should time. do the jungle. There yeah. you go. What you've done. Let me on. <laughs> Jilly, sort her out. Yeah. <laughs> don't wanna, I don't like spiders. Yeah, you <laughs> go, I shouldn't yeah. have said that. I don't yeah. like frogs. <laughs> 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 you're talking yourself out yeah, as yeah. soon as you get there. But well, okay, let's, let's just round up um, the pod and... Just talk about kind of where women's football is now, because when you started, you, you know, you said you were struggling for a team. Now there are teams everywhere. You look at the opportunities that young girls have and the, and the players have these days. And England went and won the Euros in the summer of 2022. I'm assuming you, like everybody else, just believes this game has a great future? 100%. Like I said, the turning point was 2005, and it's just grew and grew since then. Um, you know, and there's 
women's football is as popular as men's football, yeah. boys' football now. So if you're a young girl playing football, you're not going to struggle to find a club. So if you want to play football, women's football now, you, you're in the right place, yeah. Um, but the game's massive now. It's all over the TV. Um, international's faces on bottle of Budweiser, crisps, you know what I mean? So it's, it's up there with the men's. Are you jealous at all? Am I jealous? Mm. No, I'm yeah. not jealous. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, would be, I would be in there, would I? Yeah, I would yeah, be in yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not jealous. I'm like, I'm happy for, for, you know, the game. And, you know, I was part of that. Um, so I'll never forget that. You know, I mean, we kind of paved the way and players before us paved the way for for the players these days. When you, when you had somebody like uh, Alex Greenwood underneath you at Everton, and, you know, as you, I feel like you're understudy, and you see what she's done kind of since, and she's played for Lyon, she's at Manchester City now, she's well on her way to 100 caps for England, and, you know, you, you see somebody like her do so well. Do you feel as though you imparted some wisdom on her on that journey? You'll have to ask her. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try no, to ask she her. Was, like, like I say, when I was at Everton, she was coming through, weren't she? She mm. was one of the kids. Um, you'd like to think so. Like I think if I was a, a woman footballer now... Um, or say five years ago, I think I would look up to a player that was in my position. Yeah, Do you definitely. get what I mean? So if I was the Alex Greenwoods, the I would look at myself, I guess, because um, it's natural, isn't it? You yeah. wouldn't look at the right yeah. midfielder, or definitely. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'd, li yeah. I'd like to think, you know, that that players um, of this generation, we were their inspirations. Um, I might be wrong, but I believe like to think I that. believe that you are. I believe that there's definitely people that looked up to you. Um, there's people in Taekwondo who started it before us. I know Sarah Stevenson started it before we did. So like, and people probably don't know that before. So y you've definitely made it impact. You started the way I, I can, I'll put my hands up and say that they'll say yeah. Cause yeah. it's definitely, you don't forget them people who started it all off. Mm -hmm. Never forget it. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Rachel. It's been absolutely fantastic. I think I speak for both of us. That, yeah, you know, thank you. You've, you've, been, it. you've been a great guest today. So, what's next for you then? What's what, what's what's the what's, what's next on I your schedule? I think I'm going to have some lunch. I've not yet. Yeah. You've not eaten. <laughs> I no, thought you'd you've well have eaten. You've made me starve for the past three oh, wait, and a half you, hours. You've, <laughs> had you've had plenty of time. Don't give me all that. <laughs> you've had plenty no, of time. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. And it was great to see you actually go out in the van today as well. No worries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.